Hello, in today's video, I'm going to talk about how to upload files with Angular and Node.js. Uh, first, if you clone my project to make it work, you need to uh, run npm install on both the front and the back end. Once npm install finishes, you need to go to the client directory and then ng build output path is equal to server dist Angular. I need to compile the front end into the back end, this dist Angular directory. This is the compiled front end. So once you have run that, you need to create empty, empty directory called files under server. So this directory, you need because it's ignored, so uh, you need to create these files. And then you can run the project. npm install on the client, npm install on the server, then compile your front end into this Angular directory, and then create empty folder called files under server directory. Then you can back into the server, cd server and npm run dev and your app will be served on port 4455 it is not already taken and if you go to port 4455 you will be able to see this guy angular node.js with typescript and you click on the menu and there's file upload if you click on this button and navigate it to a few files like these two guys and open you will see on here the two files have been selected and these two files are now appearing under this empty directory called files. You can see these two files now appear here. So files have been up successfully uploaded. In production, obviously, you'll be using some internet uh, file sharing service, like cloud file sharing service. This is just a demo. Uh, you can also use drag and drop to drag the files into this box and to upload. But under Linux, I have another video. Under Linux, this Google Chrome, the current version, has some bugs. It, the drag and drop will not work under most situations. Yeah, so I strongly encourage you to use this button click. Now, let me walk th you through the code. First, the backend. It is trivial. The backend, you just install one package. Because I use TypeScript, I also installed this express file upload, the type declarations. So npm install express hyphen file upload. This is a middleware that you consume here. App MTS, uh, app use file upload. I set the limit to be 200 megabytes. I do not want people to upload to large files. Yeah, this is completely optional. So just use this guy as a middleware and then um, your backend will be able to consume all the payloads of files. Uh, in the post request, you have a, obviously a request body request dot files and those payloads needs to be understood and express json allows you is a middleware allows to understand json data structure while this file upload allows you to understand uh, the file payload instead instead of json payload so here you can see i import uh, these with the file file upload from express hyphen file upload i call it file upload uh, by convention. So this is how it is consumed as a middleware and that's it. Now another thing on the backend is obviously the routes. If you open the routes folder, there's upload routes. Um, I use file system to save the file to the server. Uh, so uploaded file from express file upload. This is a class for this kind of a, from this package. We can see here, how do I consume this guy? Um, you will this console log is just for debugging purpose. You have the request.files. So the payload is under property files. It's not under body or header. And let files object keys. So the, when you pass the files as a form data object, uh, form data is a kind of interface, a web interface. It's basically name value pairs. And your objects, array of files, comes as name valued pairs. So you cannot direct consume them as arrays. So even though it's a collection of files, they are saved in an object. Uh, so you grab the keys and map them to uh, the files, corresponding files. Uh, so request files and use the square brackets. You cannot use the dot notation because the file names can have white spaces in them. Um, so explanation sign tells Angular that, uh, oh, my payload is not empty. This way you can convert your files saved as properties in an object into an array of files. And then once it is converted into an array of files, you can for each file, uh, you can typecast as uploaded files. 
and then you can grab its name property. So whatever the names the user uploads, uh, we use the same name on the server when we save the file. So file system write file, this is asynchronous, so uh, you will not have blocking operations, async call, yeah. Um, you will save it under the files directory on the server side. And uh, you will use the data property, which is the contents of the file. And the file name will be exactly the same file name. Um, so whatever is uploaded as the file name, it is used as the saved file name. Uh, then that's pretty much it. We send some um, yeah, response back. So the backend is very simple. The front end is a little bit tricky. So if you go to, uh, by the way, feel free to check out, clone the project, check out the code, yeah. Um, the front end, uh, you have a few little more, a few more artifacts, but it's not difficult. Um, under this source, I have app and modules. There's a shared module. So the file upload is a component exported by the shared module because you may use this file upload repeatedly at different locations. So it's better to create a file upload component and export it. Um, so anybody who uses it can consume it. First, let's talk about this drag and drop. This is a directive consumed by file upload uh, component. You can see here, app drag and drop. This directive is consumed by this division. So the division is just this dotted line, this area. Uh, all this directive does is that when you drag some files over this area, like uh, this guy, one sec. If I drag these two files over, I'm dragging from another window, it will start to wiggle. Once I drop it, the wiggle stops. Or if I drag the file, but I drag away, the wiggle also stops. So this is to give a user some visual cue that, hey, it's time to drop the file for upload. So you can either click a button to navigate, or you can drag and drop. And remember, there's a bug in Google Chrome under Linux, so sometimes the drag and drop will not work. The file list will be empty. Okay, that's the caveat. So all the directive does, this drag and drop does, is to allow an area to wiggle on drag over, the wiggle stop on drag leave, and wiggle stop on drop. And here it's very easy. I have uh, this host listener and host binding. Uh, so I bind this wiggle class. The class is defined in the global style sheet. So I create a class called wiggle, and this is wiggle is copy pasted directly from uh, that uh, W3 schools. Create some uh, shake um, style, uh, and I copy the code. It's from W3 schools a website. They have a lot of good code. Uh, so this is the definition of the wiggle class. Uh, now you can see. In this uh, drag and drop directive, I bound that wiggle class to this uh, wiggle property in this directive. So if the wiggle property is true, the wiggle class is applied. If the wiggle property is false, the wiggle class is removed. I also put create an event called file dropped. So whenever a person drops the file on drop, you would just emit those files as what we call the file list. You can think of file list as an immutable array of files. So whenever a person drops the file, you emit that file list prop object. It's an immutable array, and it's very easy to convert a file list to array. Just use array.from function. You can convert this file list into an array. Yeah. So this directive, all it does is that uh, um, here also I have event prevent default because if you drag a PDF document over to a browser, the default behavior obviously is to open the file. So if I drag this guy over, what happens outside the box? It will, the browser will just consume and open this guy. And that default behavior is not what I needed. That's why I prevent default. And also stop propagation because this drag and drop, this dotted line, this box is housed inside a parent component. The parent component may have defined some drag and drop events. So you want to disable the default behavior, you want to disable the parent behavior. You only adopt your own behavior, which is wiggle on drag over. Um, so this is fairly straightforward, the host listener. I have uh, another video on host listeners and uh, host binding. Uh, feel free to check them out. So all this directive does is to wiggle on drag over, 
uh, wiggling stop on drag leave and wiggling stop on drop. And whenever files are dropped, I would emit those files to its host. Uh, it's called a file list object to its host. Um, so that's the directive. And I consume this directive in my file upload component. Now, the file upload component is very straightforward. You have a class called drop zone, uh, which has some styles. Um, dotted border and the, with the border radius and so on and so forth and it implements the directive app drag and drop so it has the wiggling behavior and uh, when number files drop the event happens you would consume that on the file list using on files dropped which is a function defined on the component so on file dropped on files dropped you would uh, if the files length is positive you would call the upload files function. I will spend a bit more time on the HTML file, the template, before I jump into component, the TypeScript file. So um, when you dro drop the file, it gets uploaded. Another option is to click the button. The button input type is file, and it's multiple files. Now you can select as many as you want, and it has a name. Uh, the reason I have this button style as hidden uh, is that uh, this button is very difficult. The default input button is very difficult to style. I would rather hide it and then link this button to this Angular fab, yeah, fab button, which looks much nicer with the shades, giving it a 3D effect and also have this nice little file attachment icon. So uh, hide this button and link this button to another button, uh, mat icon, with a mat icon, yeah. Got a mat fab. Whenever you click on this mat fab, it is as if it clicked on this input button because I gave a name to this input button, file select ref. So you click on this button is equivalent to click on the file upload button that is hidden. And also I did some cosmetics. While you are over this area, it's a little hand, like a drag and drop icon. When you move over the button, it's an index finger pointing icon. So the button can be clicked while this area is for drag and drop. Uh, so these are all cosmetics. If you look at the style sheet here, um, displays none. So if there is an input element nested inside this drop the zone, I would not display anything. Displays none. Yeah. So the default button for uploading files is hidden. Yeah. Instead, I use this mat fab with the file attachment icon uh, to implement this uh, input button. Okay, let's look at a component. Um, so whenever the person click a button to navigate to a bunch of files or they drag and drop a bunch of files, uh, it will call this file upload function. Um, also, I used Angular's progress bar to display some progress, but because the files are so small, the progress bar disappears almost instantaneously, so it doesn't really matter. But just to let you know that Angular progress bar is very, uh, mad progress bar is very easy to use. It's nice to show a progress bar if your file is large or if you upload multiple files and you want to cancel out some of the files. You can make multiple uh, post API calls and then cancel as you see fit. But for this exercise, because the files are so small, there's no reason to can cancel anything. It got uploaded almost instantaneously. So it will first it will take as arguments some file array. And this file array is converted from that uh, file list object or using this array from uh, once you consume convert this guy to an array you will count make sure that uh, display something the number of files is not empty it's not zero and then you can just uh yeah create a form data object and for each of the files you would just uh, append it to the form data as i mentioned earlier the form data is just api uh, it's an interface of name value pairs so you attach everything to the form data, and then you create an observable, uh, which uh, calls that a post API, define on the backend. We already walked through the backend. There's a route that accepts uploaded files. Um, then you pass the as payload the form data object. The form data object has lots of properties. Each property is a single file. And report progress is true, and observe event is true, which means whenever there's some progress being made, 
the server will send back some observable to the back end, so the back, to the front end. So the front node, front end knows that part of the file or the full file has been uploaded successfully, and so on and so forth. Obviously, after the percentage reaches 100%, you can also display something on the front end telling the user, file successfully uploaded, but I did not do that. Uh, this is a very simple example. Uh, also, once the file uploads complete, you would reset to the uh, observable to nothing, and also uh, you would reset a few things here. Look at the reset function, the progress bar is null. Um, the subscription, you cancels it. Uh, because the file has already been uploaded. Now, once you declare this guy, this post request, you can just subscribe to this post request. Um, so you can consume the upload progress and display the upload progress bar. Um, so there is a little bit of code, but they are not difficult at all. You can see total there are fewer than 70 lines of code. So this is a very, very small project. Uh, OK. So that's how to upload files in Angular and Node.js, and feel free to clone the project and test it, test it out. Yeah, it's not difficult with just a, a few lines of code. Okay, thank you guys.